Mission 1, Arosa Northbound. Welcome to Arosa Station. You're assigned to the Romeo 1430 morning service at OK Northbound to Churchill. So hey there, Joy here, and welcome back to Dovetail Games Train to World 2. Today, if I take a look at the uh, scenarios we get in the Arosa line from Rivet Games, starting off with a Northbound service from here in Arosa up to Chur. So, it's about an hour or so of service today. Should be quite a good one. Taking charge of our IHBG 4 stroke 4 Mark 2 units. So I'll jump the cab, sit the train up and prepare ourselves for our journey today. But yes, I do apologise, it has been a little while since I... Well, it's been a couple of weeks since it's actually released. And uh, today, finally giving it a go in the scenario side of things. I just need to come on board. Have I missed a marker, have I? Ah, he wants to make the footbridge, fair enough. <laughs> okay, I'll set the footbridge then, upstairs. <clears throat> yes, back in the racer line, back in the uh, Swiss Alps for Trains and World today. Right, that's better. Yeah, it's quite a fun little train, this. Over scenery, 11 kilovolts, but runs on a narrow gauge track. So this is slightly smaller than the uh, standard gauge track you get in the majority of the world. And therefore, it does require specialist units to actually run on it. So, master key comes on. Set the reverser into the forward position. And unlock the doors on the right. I am using the rail driver for our driving today, so... I am going to be making sure that everything works as set. So wipers come off. That's all fine. That's all fine. Yes, yeah, just to make sure that the rail drive the controls are all set correctly. You've got train vacuum brake. You've got your loco brake. That's fine. Loco brake will stay off. And the train brake, we will... So it's about 50%. There we go. 54 do me. Departure is approximately 20 seconds. So as soon as passengers have loaded or... Virtually, I'm going to part straight away. I think we'll actually have, have the wiper set to on. Okay, look a bit fiddly this. Hmm, do we listen to this clacking sound for the whole hour? It is snowing outside, so potentially got to uh, deal with snow today. Viking brake released, and the train starts to move. Yeah, I think we'll just turn the wipers off because the snow's not too bad and the clacking sound, definitely not what I want today. Next station is Litsuritsi Platform 2 from... Hang on. Ah, come on, wipers off. Uh, so, first station is um, Litsuritsi. From there we go to Langweiss, Piest, St. Peter Molin, this uh, Lille and Castiel, Shaw, Alstadt and then Shaw, our final destination. A little bit faster, so it's going to put a little bit of braking on from the drive control wheel. And again, using the rail driver rather than just using the keyboard controls, I do feel like I get a little bit more control in regards to the actual train operation. Could be a little bit more, a little more exact about controls, you know what I mean? So, it's probably one of the main reasons why I kind of delayed doing these scenarios for a bit. I was waiting for the Rod Ruffs control support to be added, as originally when it came released it didn't have it. But now that it's here, and now that it works, it's actually a very good way of uh, driving this route. Very happy with it. Very happy indeed. As I will say, it's a very pretty route this one. Not perfect, there are a few scenery irregularities that I'm sure... Whoops. Tunnel is it, yes. I'm sure we wouldn't mind seeing uh, works on in the future. But, for the most part, everything else, at least everything that's important, is in place. And even the snow, where kind of the draw distance is reduced and you don't quite see as much, it's definitely all in place, it's definitely all there to enjoy it. I'll be very careful on these uh, points here, because I have, in the past, derailed on them. Okay, we're staying on the main line this occasion, so braking's not really required. But, when you take the right-hand lane, I have had it in a couple of occasions where I go a bit too fast. Ah, buffers, okay, so not this one, next one then. But we're very careful of the points, because on narrow gauge track, they can be a bit easy to derail sometimes. Not, of course, 
with any experience on my narrow gauge railway up in the right of Lido. So carrying on, it's about two and a half kilometers to uh, Mitsuruti. Right there for 10 30, about seven minutes. Not just going to be minor, minor adjustments of the uh, control wheel. Trying to get it as close to 35 as possible. Got your whistle horn. And just before you get to a necessity to get to a little bit of a well, a little bit of curved track. Shows the effects of this route. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll have the wiper kind of make motion every few moments just to uh, clear the windshield. It gets a bit particularly covered. Right now, you see it's very slow to cover up, and therefore, not something I could, well, something I can live without for a couple of minutes. Again, gentle control, tiny bit of braking. Raise the brakes to slow down. The northbound portion, so from the road to the shore, the most of this is downhill. So, when going uphill, using more of the throttle, and downhill, using more of the brakes, keeps train speed currents. It's quite similar. So, at the right supply though, because what we have at the RLR is a 12-inch gauge track, so slightly thinner than this, with again specialist units, and. The route is in two halves, so when the trains cross over at Eleanor's Junction, which is the midpoint, you go uphill all the way to Eleanor's for your first half of the journey, and it's downhill the rest of the way from there. So, so again, it's another thing where you kind of really have to feel the brakes in the throttle, make sure you're not putting too much power in, especially going from Eleanor's down to Haste Hill, which is the abandoned middle station at the uh, north point of the lake. The bit of track from Eleanor's down to there, where it goes from double to single track, that is the steepest portion of the row, I believe. At least if I recall correctly. It's the steepest bit of operational track for sure. I don't think there's any that's not operational, that maybe the steeper, potentially the uh, siding by one lawn. But basically, it's a case of. Um, yeah, so it's a case of. Let the train coat on its own. Don't apply throttle, but leave it all kind of relaxed, and the train will, on its own, maintain its uh, speed. Which is a smart way of doing things. Gravity, as always, plays a very big part in that as well. So far, so good for our little train here. A little bit fast now, so again, a tiny bit of braking. Just avoid train from uh, tipping over the points over here. Okay, now this is a railway that I'd love to uh, ride on one day. There's two options. You've got the um, a roaster line. This is a passenger service operated by Swiss Railways. Or you've got the, um, I believe it's called the Alps Express. It's an express, it's the world's slowest express train where rather than travelling too much from destination to destination, it's a specialist carriage type that gives you four 360 views of the um, Alps around you. So that is more expensive, of course, but the views are better. But then again, same train, same track. I don't know if I go for the full experience or I go for just the, uh, the classic Swiss passenger experience. But definitely a trip I'd love to make one day if I find myself in this area. Sure, you can get to quite easily from um, from Bern, uh, sir, Bern, yeah, sorry, Bern, and another place as well. Uh, I don't think the line. Geneva's not too far from here. So yeah, it's not difficult to get to here because Cherbourg connects to the main line. And then the um, Aros is kind of its own separate branch away again on Nago's track. Up to a bridge now. Up to 
I thought they should move for me at the moment. That's more like it. Speed limit also has uh, increased lights up to 35 now. Going to slightly increase the brakes. I've got two uh, freight wagons you can see at the back of there, so you have got two freight wagons which you are taking empty at the moment. Getting a tiny bit faster than the round corner now, so again, small, small adjustments to keep that down a bit. And very shortly, arriving at Lizardy, so I've got a right hand turn to make, and then we'll be arriving at the platforms. Break slightly again, as soon as we've got a little bit of speed to drop. I mean, even with rail driver, it's a fire to every point to keep this train rolling at a uh, suitable speed. I can tell you now, with a keyboard, it's much, much harder. I'd love to try some of the uh, TS control stuff at some point in the future, see how that kind of feels. If anyone ever makes like a proper controller like this, then absolutely. Sign me up for that. <laughs> I must say, it's very, uh, it's very well, not peculiar. These controls, it's very, very direct. If you know what I mean, you've got to be very exact with what you're doing. Otherwise, you could potentially go and, uh, well, derail or spad. Worst case scenario. All right, as long as it's two now, we're taking the right-hand lane, I believe. Yes, we are. But we'll leave the braking on for now as we slowly arrive at the end of the platform. So I just shy that red signal overhead. Just quite a tiny bit of a uh, loco braking. That'll be more vacuum brake only for the stone tight. Loco brakes for train loco brakes for this particular unit is on its own, so like a brake controls the RHB G44 brakes, the train brake, the vacuum brake controls the uh, entire length, sorry, so if I go towards the coupling, you'll see a power hose there, little cable hose, that is your vacuum brakes. While we're here, we'll do the guard's job of pressing the signal. That will come under a little phone box. If I can try and find that. Unless the station doesn't have it. I'm fairly sure it does, though. Uh, that's your junction, yes. That's fine. That's your snow globe bits. I'm not too sure. I'm sure there's a little phone box I need to access. Perhaps like this station, then. So we'll lock the doors. Signal's green. Fair enough. Off we go. So release the brakes and increase the throttle. Next station, Langvise. I've been about five ish minutes. down to a 6% gradient now, so whilst we do has increased to 35, I'm going to put a lot more braking in now, just to keep train steady. Fortunately, we're using an electric brake for that. If we're using the, um, again, using the loco brake for it, or the vacuum brake, what we would be doing is grind down the uh, brake box on it. It's not something we particularly want to do. By using the drive control wheel brake, which uses the electric brakes to reduce the... Well, it increases the... Um, what's the word? It increases the kind of the grip on the wheels. The motors, even. It kind of tightens the motors, adds... 
So there's a particular word that I'm now barely remembering. It's going to be super obvious though when I remember it in about like 30 seconds. But it increases the, uh, not the friction. You know what I'm talking about. But it basically increases the kind of tightness of the motors. And it just has trying to slightly reduce its speed. different circuits which makes it very awkward via the uh, main controls. That sounds. That's very annoying now. There we go. Nope. Come on. Come on. I don't know what I've done now. The wipers have kind of stopped themselves. Let's control for them rather than using the uh There, no. Ah, that's it, I've broken the wipers. Is it on the rail driver unit? I can no longer shut them off. There you go, wipers there. Off. Off. Way too fast now. <laughs> uh, this is a lot easier on the miniature gauge railway, I can tell you that as a fact now. So much easier on the miniature gauge railway. You don't have massive mountains inside of your railway to uh, worry about. A lake, but if it trains up in the lake, then you've done something horribly, horribly wrong because it doesn't really go into that. I'll just use the uh, wiper buttons from now on, just because it's so much easier than <laughs> doing it on the rail driver. It's a great unit, but it's not. It's compatible with all locos, but it's not compatible with locos, you know what I mean? Where some trains, if they're slightly different in regards to their control setup, then it's not really the optimum way of doing things. I mean, the, the power handle's alright for this. Power handle master controller is perfect for this. The small adjustments you can make to keep the train running steady, absolutely fantastic. But there are some things that could be done uh, elsewhere, basically. There you go. Now crossing the uh, bridge into Langweiss. About 30 kilometers per hour, this. On a clear day, a very, very pretty scene. But still, a solid uh, 60 FPS scene, I must admit. Again, sticking to the right hand track since we are a northbound train. And as you go now to continental Europe, you drive on the right, you trains operate on the right. The only country that doesn't follow that is France, and that's because a lot of the French network was built by the British, and so as a result, the French railway network follows the British uh, method of driving on the right. Doors unlock, just have a quick look around the station, see if there is a Thing for us to press. Got a map there, we'll probably do that later. The answer is no, not this station. So it's probably more towards the centre of the map where you have crossover points. So, oh no, there we go. Door open and signal contacts there. So I'll wait for the uh, doors to close. That'll be in a couple of seconds now. Five seconds to expect a departure. Doors will close. Ah, too soon. Too soon. There we go. Just add an extra seconds to that. So, yellow button comes on. Green button active. We need to now have our clearance to depart.
Next station, Peist. So it's probably, probably running level, of course, to immediately go downhill again. to put some brake control in. Again, the 6% gradient. I do feel it does go a bit deep, uh, deeper at some portions, especially towards some of the uh, latter bits of these hills. Some throttle, now going uphill, so again immediately go back downhill again. So between Peist and St. Peter Molinus, you get a little bit of dipping tracks, like a roller coaster. This, with me being the roller coaster operator, it's my job to keep that speed as steady as possible. So we've gone up to 40 there, it's way too fast for this bit. Still in the yellow, if I hit the red on the speed onto the low right there, that's the big danger point. But Again, what you realise is that with these routes, the speed limit right now is at 30, uh, 35, 30 kilometers from there. Right? There is definitely some room for leeway there. We could probably go up to about 45, 50 at a stretch without derailing. But the problem is, if you derail this train, that's a bigger problem here than anywhere else in the world, basically, where here you're at risk of now derailing and slipping outside of a 2,000 foot mountain left right hand side so there is definitely some leeway to be given because the extremities of derailments are uh, well very severe so a kilometre and a half now to uh, Peist There just to do a quick wipe. Try to push our speed up again, just hit that 35 mark. My train's not taking any power at the moment, so let me reset that two seconds. So braking fine, drive the control wheel. Yeah, you're not putting any power at the moment, train. What could be causing that? Reverse, sorry, yeah, reverse forwards. Brake valves are empty. Not too sure then. You can see we are putting power. We're only putting 16 amps. Should be a lot higher right now. Uh, has anything come off? That I should be aware of. Rear lights, cab lights, false, that's fine. Red lights, train lights, train line on. Compressor, main switch, pantograph is up. Should be alright to kind of coast it to a uh, heist. The big concern is if we don't make it. Do we have any other problems later on? We'll see. For now, we're all right. So I must say, I do like the physics on the front of that as well. The train jolts around. Let's have a look at the, uh, the cables on the front there. Turn coming up now. I do 
do jolt around, bump around. Very, very good indeed. That's uh, video physics for you. Unity is a fantastic engine in tra uh, doing simulators in. Visually, is I'm. Is it Unity or Unreal? Sorry, Unreal. Unreal Engine, sorry. Uh, Unreal is beautiful to, uh, engine to do sims in. It's just saying that, well, especially for large scale maps, it's not always the best option for it. But something like this, something like Train Sim World, it's perfect for it, kind of size wise, simulation wise, the physics and all that. It's a very, very good way of doing things. Alright, parts going up now, so one we're stationary here. I'm going to have a look at our electrics, just to make sure everything's working as expected. So we'll stationary the train, we'll stop at Pist, but before we open the doors, we'll kind of just uh, roll it. The train currently stations the platform, so this will be our first crossing point. Train stationary now. Before I open, we'll see. High power. Okay, we do get rolling, so it obviously was just a power draw error or power draw issue earlier on that is now resolved. When we get to shore, I'll definitely put that into the logbook as we're going through, um, well, long advice to Pist. Train was not drawing any power from the scenery, and therefore, potential issue for train being stuck. Uh, so we'll request stop button, so if you want to request stop, you can press that button there. That would then send a signal into, I believe it's the guard who then received that. Stop doors. Signal should turn green for us. There we go. Brakes released. And train it ready to depart. So you've got the, pa the ampage now. You've, uh... Easily got 100 there. 100 amps, no problem. How will stop with 16 earlier? I'll never know. Next station, uh, Luen Castiel. We're just about to hit the midpoint of our route as well. It's a little bit straighter here, less. Well, I say less curves. There are a lot of curves on the way, but uh, not quite as twisty as it was earlier on. But compared to other routes, you're a lot more hands-on with this uh, driving unit. A lot more hands-on indeed. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I really am enjoying it. from that. So between St. Peter Molinus and Lua Castiel, this is the second longest uh, distance between two stations. The longest on this line is that between uh, Lua Castiel and Shore Altstadt, which is all the way in the uh, final destination city. Fast now, it's in the 40s there again. Now, 
do more interior driving at this point on to keep the uh, speed under control. If going uphill, it's a little bit easier in regards to sticking throttle on then try and hold it. Braking downhill, definitely a bit more going on. The worst case scenario going uphill is that you're going too slow. Worst case is down, you're going too fast and uh, well you guys know exactly what happens when you go too fast. This is St. Peter Molinus. But we're not stopping here. Running right through. No passenger requested it, and therefore there's no need for us to stop. Uh, Pisces and Peter Molinus. Langweiss as well, I believe. They're all request stops, and therefore passengers need to request to uh, board train here. No request, no need for a stop. Luan uh, Catillo as well, I believe, is one as well. I'll double check. Very scenic route. This okay, was that cable car? Is that power lines? No, these power lines up ahead. Cable cars. Cable cars more towards the uh, skiing resort. So that would have been Peter Mullins behind us. Been as well, just up ahead. Two and a half kilometres now to our next station. Arriving there in about again seven odd minutes. Start finish about one hour. Race to short. Line, length of line. Some flight twenty kilometres. Was it twenty thirty kilometres? Maybe a bit more than that with all the uh, twists and turns. But it does take you a good hour to get from start to finish, and so service wise, definitely a bit of work for you to do in this. Speed there. Now balancing for 30 kilometers per hour. I had, if this was a live stream and I had my kind of the camera pointed at the uh, Roger control unit, you kind of get an idea of how much I'm actually manipulating the controls as the engine goes on. You can kind of see it from the control wheel down below. You've got the control wheel, you've got the thing on the right hand side there as well, which tells you the uh, on, wipe up, uh, which tells you the power percentage as I'm moving it. But you can just kind of see how much I'm adjusting that. Yeah, hit the red there, so I'm really slow down now. How much I'm adjusting that. Keep train running stable. Yeah, you may ask why the speed also goes up to 25. The train, the units, the um, four stroke four two, that can hit around 110, I believe it's 115. So the train itself can go fast. The problem is the infrastructure on this occasion, where the line has such a low top speed, you're almost never going to hit it. And certainly on this line, you're never gonna hit never gonna hit more than fifty on this line. Even when it straightens out around through uh sure, because by the time he hits um the sand depot and into Altstadt, that's now away from kind of being your standard train line, but more your light rail tram service where the train runs on the road. 
And that's where Rose, um, River Games sorry, have done a lot of work in regards to the control system, at least the traffic system, where as your train approaches particular junctions, so traffic light changes or your train's about to hit a roundabout or a crossing junction, the AR cars will stop and wait for the train to pass before continuing. And so the actual technology behind this route is very, very smart. Again, it's not a perfect scenery, more trees would be fantastic, more draw distance, that kind of stuff. Scenically, visually, it could be slightly better. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is beautiful. Look at it. You've got your trees, you've got your rocks, your snow. It's a good looking route. It's more kind of the background stuff, kind of as you look out into the distance. It's a bit bare barren that for, for the Alps. But everything else is definitely there. And technology as well. The technology is fantastic. So again, you've got your uh, request buttons, you've got your uh, guards clear to depart signals, you've got your road traffic all set up. It's a smart, smart route, this. And I can't wait to see what else we're going to have in the future. The next route, they're doing a Cornwall run from Penzance and Tives, set in the 1970s, 1980s. So it's River Games doing a historical route, therefore HSTs and... I'm trying to think, probably uh, diesel rail cars out there, so like 101 again. But, um, yeah, the technology what River have is really good. So you look at the 483 on the Isle of Wight route, the glass panel, fully functional. That was all there. You could play around with it and all that. You just need a pretty good looking route to go with it. But compared to Isle of Wight, this is definitely like a head above shoulders, new, new thing, well above that. I enjoy Isle of Wight, I really enjoy Isle of Wight, but this, there's an extra thing to it, I don't know what it is, I think it may just be the tech and the actual kind of bare bones behind it, but uh, yeah, a rose line, it's a fantastic route, and I'm having a lot of fun playing with. Alright, as we do this tunnel, we'll be able to spot the uh, station right in front of us, well, on a clear day we would, I was trying to be on this, uh, low visibility snow day. Speed does drop down to 30 now, so it's like low speed of that. Track splits to 2. And there's the platform. Gradually, we'll run the train to a halt. Just remember well. Platform end 40 odd meters. A signal in about, uh, well, 40 as well, so it's a very tight one. This do not want to go too fast. About 20 seconds or two to spare. Push it slightly. And where those people are there standing, that is our target location. Platform. Bit tight, I will say. 40 on meters to the uh, signal. 40 on meters to the red, sorry, to the end platform as well. So, what we're aiming for is kind of about here, I'd say. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, brakes on, unlock doors. Thing is, the signal's over there, but the stop marker kind of right in front of us, so I don't want to go too far forward in the off chance we end up, well, <laughs> not stopping in the right place. Definitely a bit further back than I would have gone for myself, that's for sure. Is there a phone? Yes, there is. Got another, well, five seconds or so before departure. Give me a few seconds, let you board, and then we'll close the doors. You on board? There, perfect. Doors close. Yeah, button light. Green button light. We have clearance parts. Brakes release. Signal green. Let's get going. Next 
station Shaw Sands North. Again, this is the longest bit of the journey without a station in between. So we're going to be very hands on the controls there. There's no ETX, so sorry, not going. Um, sorry, Shaw Sands, Shaw Sands northbound, that's, um, sorry, that's our via location, so Shaw Sands being the depot. After that, we need to be at um, Shaw by 11.17, so we've got just under 20 minutes until our next station. Plenty of time, it's about 6 kilometers to get there. And all to that, takes us just outside the uh, main running line up to Shaw, the main station there. Now it's kind of find the uh, the sweet spots. The train there, so going a bit fast. One more brake pedal in, 60%. As you can see, we're no longer accelerating, we're no longer losing speed. So there are sweet spots to the brakes, sweet spots to dial. That do allow you to coast without really affecting your speed. Wipe. If you lose speed, it's the slowest drop you'll ever notice. So I'm right 33.8. About 30 seconds later, go down to 0.7. So forth, so forth, so forth. The train will eventually slow down, but not for a little while to come. The gradients match up and the uh, train speed matches up. Everything else can be done essentially on like an autopilot. Very, very pretty train this. And a very decent one that as well. A lot going on there. Stuff we can't really click on, so destination displays there for example, all the rate controls there we can't really mess with. But it all, it all has its place. And then that's some very good control. I'm interested in what that is. The uh, little reflective bit there. I don't know if that's a mirror or not. That is something I'm not quite sure what it is. I'll have to look into it at some point, maybe look for a technical guide or something. I believe it's a mirror, but I could be wrong. From an external point of view, I'm just gonna have the tunnel give it a few seconds to uh, come to life. Also, drops you down to dirt seat. There we go. It does look like a fold down mirror, that's that would be to stick out and they give me some kind of visual of the uh, rear of the train. But, with the guard on board, potentially not something they re we require, because the guard's now in charge of the passengers at the back, the front, which driving the train. So there will be some, some rolling around that, the uh, requirements of the mirror here. Potentially also because of the, whoops, the narrow loading gauge this line. Something that's best to be inside, rather than hanging out and therefore click on the tunnel, you lose it. A wipe. There we go. Same reason I have the cab light on, which makes the snow really, really visible. It makes it pretty, uh, well, not quite as easy to drive visually. Lights on, snow much more visible, a bit turned off.
back onto level track. Cut the brakes. This is more of a passing point in the station, so pass through, no stopping. And the other train, there's only only two trains operate on this line at a time. You pass out of the way out in uh, Langweiss, or Pice, sorry. Meaning you can drive the rest of the run without any real worry about traffic on the other line. There could be a freighter though, there could be a freighter later on. That though, as a driver, I get all the details, for example. Start the route be like, okay, you pass train here, you pass train here. Off you go, you know what you're doing. For example, at the Rust Glider, we operate with token working. So, if, um, well, there's two ways we've got token working and we've got radio control. Token working, you have to swap tokens with another train before you pass through a certain part of the line. And radio control, yeah, there's several passing moves you can use. You can use uh, Wellington, Eleanor's, or Hayes Hill, three locations, and then that'll be provided to you over the radio. So, you're passing the train at this location be prepared to uh, stop if required. So, all depends on how the run is done in real life. Imagine it's all going to be road controls. Now we're going to do token work on a line like this. But uh, there are a few possibilities out there, especially in a two train running line. Well, actually, no. Signals, that's what it is. As the guard, you have to press the button to alert the signalman that your train is ready to go through. Then, based on the other train's position, you can work around through there. So actually there is method. It's kind of like token working, but more digital. And over a wider scale, what, than just one location, you've got all of these stations passing points to uh, signify that. It's back up to 68% braking. That I've noticed, around 68 70%. That seems to be the sweet spot for this line, especially on the 6% gradients. When it's a bit shallower, a little bit less braking. But that seems to be the sweet spot right there. Minus 173 amps on the brake, on the, um, on the motors. Just before we hit the uh, Shure Sands Depot. Speed limit does drop down to 30, so can we use that 3 kilometers per hour? It's a good 2.5 kilometers now until we actually hit the uh, next bit of civilization. Gotta say, it's a very fantastical route. This got your little units, got your little carriages loaded to the floor, winding around the mountains. Two little freight wagons at the very back. And the detail as well, what I do like is this bit as well. This is a guarding, uh, guarding brake van and uh, combined freight floor as well. Your guard will live back. Well, your guard will sit back here. Got your seats. Got your little control uh, room there. Got your passengers in there as well. Table access. There you go. It's all there. It's all built up. Second class. Get your first class at the front. Very, very powerful tower route. This. Train, even sorry, well thought out train. So just under two kilometers until we hit the Shore Sand Depot. One kilometer, force speed drops down to 30 kilometers per hour. We should, for the most probably, green signal all the way to the end now. Of course, stations will show red until we get our signals clear. Apart from that, everything else should be smooth sailing. That's 
level ground. Well, it's not level ground, but shallower ground. Therefore, don't want to put too much braking on just to stop training from again slowing down. That will pick up again. So down to 6, back up to 68. Slow down so slightly. There we go. Or avalanche clearer. So basically, you've got these little roof bits here, slanted roofs, and in the case of any avalanches that drop down from above, rather than on the track and therefore uh, paralyzing the line, what it will do, slanted roof, is it'll drop it down to the far side. So you've got your road on the far side here, you've got your railway line here, and it will snow that slips off, and that'll be clear of the track, and now trains to operate without any blockages. But at the end of the day, this railway line is the vital link between Shaw and Arosa and all the little communities around the um, the line. There is a road, not all of it's connected by road, and while the road can be blocked several months at a time, the railway is always clear. And therefore, passenger movements, people movements, freight movements, all done by rail. There we go, so I'm going to cross up with the uh, there, so it's on the whistle. Track and pipe. No cars out here at the moment. So let's go. Speed drop down to 30. And we now go from a traditional railway to more of a tram like system. So we run a lot of the road, and this run, run through the road. It's less than a kilometre now to uh, draw San Zeppo pass through there. Building up ahead, so we've got civilization slowly coming into view now as well. So we're using just under half our braking now. Keep the train running steady at 30 km per hour on this 2.3% gradients. I know it's quite a day for uh, sitting out in the umbrella there, but you sit here, you have your, your coffee in the morning, and there you go, the Eurosa Express. Is it Romeo 1439, something like that? Right, so there's there from the right. We're passing through. Remember correctly, we need to be at the station for 17. Today, 17 past. So, six minutes, so five minutes or so. 1.2 kilometers. That's Plenty of time. See, so yeah, I'm not really drawing any power at the moment. That's either down to the train's motors, icing on the overhead catenary, or just how the train's designed. What I like about this is, you'll notice... Nope, scrap that. I'm just being blind. <laughs> That's a pavement, it's not a rail. Uh, what I thought was going on there is that it's kind of like three rails where your train kind of runs on one rail or the other rail, rail or the other rail, but no, that's just pavement. Ignore me, I'm just being dumb there. Because I know in a lot of places you have kind of interlaced railway where your train will run on a narrow portion of track, but on two separate tracks. And so, it, look at in, interlaced rail. It's quite an interesting little concept, that. Sadly, though, it's not a case that. Uh, I should know that as well, because I've been through the station plenty of times. So, sure, out stats coming up next. Six hundred meters odd. Ah, interesting. 
This is short out stats. So not stopping here. Going to the end today. I can imagine it's probably easiest to walk to a uh, short station rather than getting trained there. And you really out stats if you're travelling out to Erosa. Right, the other way around. Pass through the roundabouts. Pass through the town centre. There's your bus up to the left. Crawl away now to the end of the line. Oh, there's your bus. Meters stop. We'll make a right hand turn at the next junction. And that says it's on to our own dedicated Arose line platforms. What numbers were they? Um, I can't remember if they're platforms one and two, or I think they're like platforms seven and eight at the uh, far end. We'll find out in just a moment. A bit throstling. There's the uh, other train now just departing from short. And they will then cross with the other train. Probably now Arosa, at least very shortly about to arrive at Arosa. And again, that across is either Langweiss or Peist. Whoops. And there you go, 90 metres to stop. Anywhere for the red signal. It's platforms. One and something there. But uh, platform one and two, and that's just the uh, sea location. There we have it. Doors unlocked. Passengers for now to embark. Do we pull them around? The answer is no, not on this occasion. So, when our passengers to leave the train, Set our controls up for the uh, end of service, so uh, reverse to neutral, lights come off, of course the wipers will come and do their own thing now. And uh, yeah, let's control that into the off position, because yeah, train back in Brixton position, that's fine. Perfect. Door open, jump on out, and head over to our next driver, we'll take the return service later. I'm going to maybe wait a minute and 40, fine, walk around, have a look around, and then we'll learn this up here. <laughs> now, there's a little uh, map of Switzerland. Very good. We'll jump on down, head over to the uh, mainland station, pick up the map. I say, in, in an hour, well, just, uh, just under an hour, we've travelled the entire length of that. We've gone from Rosa all through the uh, Alps, right up to uh, Shuron the north and west. Just behind those doors there, we'll go around the corner. And we'll see the rest of the platforms out in the Shore Mainline Station. So the Shore Mainline Station takes you to all the other major cities out in Switzerland. Takes you out all the way to uh, so you've got uh, Bern, you got yourself uh, Geneva. <laughs> That's about it, really. I am sorry, but I cannot think of any other big cities here in Switzerland. I'm probably missing out one or two though. I'm sure, people in chat like. Hey, you've got this place, you've got that place, but unfortunately as a premiere, I cannot quite uh, see your prize on this occasion, but I'm sure I'll have it at some point. Let's see where else we can head up to. Right, 10 seconds, and that brings us to the last scenario. Any second now. Any second. No? Oh, locked doors. Okay. <laughs> we'll do that then. Right, jump up. Come on, up the stairs. There we go. Take a seat. Close the doors. Jump back out again. Thank you for completing the run. Let's see how you performed. Hey, 
any second now. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's all scenarios. Apart from like one or two missions, it always drags it out for some really weird bit of time. There we go, right. So, you guys have got a model for that. Total score, 7,050 points. Level 700 character, level 5. Nope, level 4 Neurosa line, level 4 new unit. And you can just see our speed there, how erratic it is, because there are some moments, you can see where we're stopping, alright, that's no problem. But then there's just moments where you kind of, towards the end, it smooths out, but especially at the beginning, it's very, very bumpy, that, as I'm slowly going to get used to controls there, but it's not difficult by any means. It does take that time to kind of learn and adjust to it, but everything else, pretty much uh, standard there. And yeah, that brings us now to the end of our first run, Arosa Northbound. So tune in tomorrow, we'll do the second scenario for Rosa Southbound. Again, that's from Shure to Arosa. Basically return to what we've just done today. But hopefully a bit more fun to enjoy there. So thank you all for watching. You take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all in the very near future for some more Train Sim World 2 action. Take care, have a good one, and goodbye.